friend, welcome back. Thanks for coming over here. My name is Kaylin. This is Full Purpose and Heart. So if you're new, then welcome to our side of the mountain. So today's video, I want to share with you our summer schedule or what we're gonna be doing for school over the course of the summer. And this year is gonna be different than any of the other years I've ever done for a couple of reasons, but primarily because my schedule has changed. And so because of that, I wanted my kids to have something that's a little bit more independent um, as well as something that I can maintain throughout the summer. We oftentimes, in fact, up until this year, we always have started our school year uh, in July, but this year we probably won't start our official school year until maybe even October. Um, I don't know for sure how that's gonna work out, but summer school is gonna end in August, and then we have some road schooling that we'll be doing a little bit in September, so I'm not sure like when regular school's gonna fall in, but that is beside the point. Today's video is what we're doing for summer school, so let's go ahead and get started. So in the past, if you've been here for a minute, then you know, some of my um, I, some of my videos up here are going to talk about how we have done the summer basket for our summer school schedule. And I just put a bunch of different things in the basket in years past. And we had the Evan Moore summer activities book that we would go through. And it was just a really fun time when I got to just gather my kids around me and have some kind of structured time during the day for our summer. But over the last what, six years that we've been doing that, it feels like we're pretty strong in the beginning, the middle is weak, and then by the end, we've completely dropped off the bandwagon and we're no longer doing summer baskets. So I wanted to create a new system for our family that was going to hopefully give it more independence, as I mentioned before, because my schedule has changed um, so much that I just don't have that freedom to be able to sit with my kids like I used to. And so I wanted something a little more independent that would give them something to keep them kind of moving along in their schoolwork, as well as something that I could check and make sure that we're moving forward. So without further ado, I give you summer 2022. <laughs> I rhymed. Did you like that? All right. So this is what I have made for each of my kiddos. They each have one. This one's my oldest boys. Anyway, they look the same. So I made this from canva.com and that's how like the summer and like this little blue thing with the fruit on the bottom, um, it was a suggested like template and I just was like, oh, that looks really summery. So I decided to do that and then I put each child's name up on the top and then I transferred that background onto Microsoft PowerPoint. So I know that PowerPoint isn't like in everybody's home like it used to be, <laughs> like in the 80s and 90s, um, but I still love PowerPoint and I create almost all, not even almost, I create all of my school pages that I make for my kids on PowerPoint. So it was totally worth the investment for me now that you have to like pay an annual fee for it or whatever garbage they do. but. Back in the olden days, it just came with your computer. But anyway, um, so that's how I put this. And then these are just like tables. So I made a table and a table. We have math lessons, reading lessons, and then book badges. So I'm going to talk about each of those here in just a minute. But what I did is I took the curriculum that I wanted them to do and I started with the lesson number where we finished our school year. And then I counted, okay, well, how many weeks of school do we have? and then five days of each of those weeks, and then I subtracted about 20 days, I think, or something like that, um, so that they could have an average number of like days of school that I wanted stuff to be finished. And so here's this, and then every week, my kids are expected to get at least four to five stickers every single week. Now, whether or not they do two lessons in a day and then zero lessons one day or Three, they can do no more than two a day, so it kind of makes them stretch it out a little bit, but by the end of each week, they have to have no no less than four and no more than five stickers, okay? So that is how we have structured it, and then by the end, I think I did, I don't even know how many are here, but regardless. Okay, so let's talk about each kid's grade. So this is my son, he's going into fifth grade. So we are in teaching textbooks level five right now. And I think we 
I'm going to do a video on teaching textbooks because I think we're going to do it for fifth grade, but we're probably going to be doing level six for fifth grade. So, and there's a reason for that, which I'll talk about later. And I hate when videos do that, but for those of you who aren't interested in it, I don't want to like take your time, but in the future, I will tell you kind of our philosophy or our reasoning as to approaching teaching textbooks the way that we are. That being said, so we are here and we are actually starting on lesson, we started on lesson 45. There are, I think, 117 or 120 lessons or so. Anyway, so, and we're gonna finish the summer on lesson 90. That includes a couple of quizzes. So every time he finishes one, he puts a sticker on it. And he's been averaging about two every time he sits down. So he does math about two times a week, three times a week, if because he had five this time. So, um, Anyway, so he just does that and I love it because teaching textbooks gives him the the training that he needs as he moves through the concept. Um, it is spiral learning. Did you notice how I got that first time? It is spiral learning. So he goes back to concepts that he learned previously that are easier before they retouch on the new concepts that are more difficult. There was a whole section in the middle um, that was about metric units and measuring like weight and um, liquid measurements and all of that stuff. And I don't think we're really good at it, but I skipped it <laughs> because um, because we live in America. <laughs> I know that's terrible, it's terrible, but I don't know the metric system very well. And so um, we'll pick it up probably in sixth grade, but I did skip it in fifth grade. So I should probably edit that out of the video. I'm sure that either one of you is laughing at me or you're probably like, tisk tisk, Kaylin. I don't know. But anyway, so this is how we are going to go ahead and track every time he does those lessons. Then he just puts a sticker on it. And I got these stickers from Amazon. I just picked ones that I knew would fit in these little tiny boxes. So they're just reward stickers. Okay. For reading, both of my kids, um, my first grader and my fourth some whatever going into fifth grader um, are doing these are Evan Moore daily reading comprehension books and they are just doing one page a day again this is an activity that requires no like whatever from me like I don't have to direct it I don't have to teach it it's all very very independent so this is my son's and yes it is third grade and he's going into fifth grade and he's a great reader but this is the one that I have and I didn't I didn't want to order another one. So I had this one from years ago and we just never got to it. So I told him, guess what? This is going to be good for you. And it requires the student to write the answer instead of like multiple choice. So this is, I'm telling him like, you need to write full complete sentences and have as much correct grammar as you can put a period, have the capital in the front lower cases where they need to be those kinds of things so this is kind of an opportunity not only for reading comprehension but it's going to just help him practice his penmanship a little bit and those writing skills before we move into fifth grade where we'll have a little bit more of a intentional writing curriculum so um and just for a quick view so this is the um grade one they always have three uh, questions that go with the reading and the reading is very short and easy and it's great so um anyway this is grade one I, these are the work texts they're the student practice books you can buy this curriculum and get a teacher's manual and they're quite a bit more expensive i think they're double the price but i didn't need to have like any kind of teaching that went with it this is just reading comprehension for my kids so um i just went down a couple of levels and i think that my daughter's probably at a level a grade like two ish reading level so i just put her in the grade one just so that she can do that on her own so every time they finish a page so that's what these numbers right here are so these numbers up on the top part are their um lesson number this is my youngest but anyway this is my it's a little cleaner anyway so this is the lesson number that they're gonna do so you can see for my oldest if it's a quiz I wrote quiz number nine and then quiz number eight or whatever or the actual lesson number and then down here is the page number so page eight nine ten eleven twelve and those are just obviously are the page because these ones are titled you know week 18 day four so it's just one two three four five over and over and over again and then 
I didn't want to put that on there. So I just put the page number. Okay, so every time they finish a page. Now these ones, all of my kids do two pages a day. They probably would do all five if I let them. But again, in an effort to try to like stretch it out or have a more consistent practice instead of like overloading our Monday so the rest of the week we could just do no school. Um, I do have them, I only allow them to do two pages a day. So so that's what my two older ones do. My youngest, um, well let's talk, yeah, my youngest reading is, this is a stuff from some Teachers Pay Teachers and they're all loose sleeves so I had to print them all out. So I put them inside of this folder here and um it this is i couldn't even tell you who it's from oh caitlin albany i guess is the name of her shop a l b is that gonna like focus for you a n i caitlin a l b a n i anyway um so i just printed off her it was called reading comprehension um i think it's like kindergarten level probably and so i printed off two different like kits so we're just starting off and he just reads, I like my ball, and then he reads the four of them and then we answer these questions together. So um, this is very like teacher heavy. I do do all of the work with my youngest. He is not an independent learner right now. And so um, I do everything with him for that. Um, as far as my other two students and their math, so if you missed it, they're only required every day to do math and English or math and reading comprehension. Those are the two things that we're kind of like focusing on this summer. Um, so this is the math that my kindergartner is going to be doing going into preschool or preschool going into kindergarten. He will be five. And so um, this is the one that he's doing. And he started this towards the end of last year. So we just picked it up. We're kind of in the middle. This is an Abeka book numbers skills k5 again i just put the page number on the bottom for each one that he does and he loves to do math so he would probably do like 10 pages a day if i let him but he doesn't understand quite as much like you the need for me to tell him to slow down but he just is like can i just keep doing it um and then my daughter is doing um She's doing Horizons Level 2 Book B, so or Level 1 Book B. So we started Level 1 Book B probably in like March, I'm going to say. And so I just continued moving on with that. And again, she's required to do five lessons a week. But these lessons, they're really big text. And so this one has got a lot of these kinds of things. But I would tell her like only do the blue or only do the yellow one, and then these ones are just a lot. It's just really fast. So she does, um, she usually does one a day, but by the time the weekend comes, if it's Saturday and I check their check marks, I check their stickers, and if in the event they don't have four stickers, then I don't allow them to do their Saturday things, like go outside and ride their bike or watch their shows or play their video games or whatever we do on Saturdays, like depending on what the Saturday is until they have gotten at least four stickers. So for example, today, my daughter only had three math lessons done. So I told her, okay, but before you go play with friends, um, then you have to put that fourth sticker on. And then she had all of her reading done. So it was just quick. I just sat with her and we, we just busted it out and that was good. So that is the first part of our, um, of that. And then, oh, on the bottom, I missed one little section here. So that's math and reading and then reading comprehension. So then on the bottom here are our book badges. This is something that I made, um, a while ago. I didn't bring them over here. So let me reach over and grab a page. Um, well, you can kind of see those. Can you see those up there? Probably not. Okay, so I made these book badges kind of a long time ago, a couple summers ago, and um, so I just reprinted them. These are on my Teachers Pay Teachers shop as well if you would like to get them for yourself. Um, I have, I don't know how many I have, 6, 12, 13, 14, 15 pre-made badges, and then I have a bunch of blank ones too, so you can make your own if you want to. But anyway, what my kids are doing is that every time we go to the library, they are picking books that are their grade level that match one of these badges. So I have award winner, poetry, fairy tale book list, a space book, 
um, a biography. They need, they can start a series. Uh, we have one of our friends from church is the librarian. So they can, not that that matters, but they're a little more comfortable asking her, I guess, because they see her at church all the time. But anyway, so about, they can ask the librarian for a recommendation and then they can get the librarian one, which is this one right here. Anyway, as they are finishing their books, um, then they get their badge. And so I made these little like certificates. Again, this was from Canva. So I just put their name in it and changed the words a little bit. And then on the back of the badge, I write what the book was. So my daughter read The Princess in Black and then they earn their badge. And at the end of, so they each have on their bottom, like they have to earn so many badges for the end of the summer. And for their whole page here, I gave them a date and I said, summer, your summer ends on August, whatever it was, and you need to have all the stickers by the end of the summer. So they know this is my youngest. He needs to have three book badges by the end of the summer. And my older two, I think they have four. I think they both have to do four. Yeah. Anyway, so then they earn their badge. And so I would recommend when you go to put these on here to start in the middle and then you can kind of like go around the side this way because if they earn more badges, you can do incentives like if you earn 10 badges, then we're going to have a pizza party. Or if you earn the 200 page badge right here, then that's worth something. We're going to have an ice cream social or something and invite all the friends over or we're going to whatever, right? You can have some kind of fun end of summer reward if they earn enough badges. When I did this before I was putting them on a flag, I actually made a flag and I was um, hot gluing the badges to the flag and we were waving, like we put it in our flag holder out in front of our house. So that was how we did it uh, when I first made these several summers ago. So anyway, that is how we're doing our summer reading program. The library is also doing a summer reading program, which my kids are participating in, but that's just counted by the minutes. So they're just getting rewarded all the time for like one reading session, right? They get their book badge or they get their, um, the, a sticker on here. My son is also counting his 20 books because that's his goal this year. So I actually put it, here's his summer thing. I actually put it on the back. So he is going to be tracking 20 books. That's his goal this summer. And he made that goal himself. So if he gets 20 books, then um, we're going to do a pizza party for him. So anyway, so that is part two of summer. Okay, part three of summer is our mind, body, and spirit. So um, every day my kids want to play video games or watch screens or do something like that. I know I'm not alone because I'm sure you probably deal with the same thing. So I set up this year... Um, that every time they ask me, mom, can I play video games or mom, can I watch a show? I will ask them, one, did you get your stickers for today? And then two, did you do something for your mind, for your body and for your spirit? And so um, each of those activities I have, well, I have a goal that they need to spend at least 20 minutes in each of those areas. So they can't just like, go and pray and say, okay, I did something for my spirit. I said a one 30 second prayer. Um, but so I try to provide activities that they can do for at least 20 minutes. So what I did is I made this little jar and the blue is for their mind. The, their body is this orange and then the yellow ones are their spirit. So you can see, I just have little craft sticks in here. And then I wrote down their things that they can do for each of those areas, right? So for example, the body, you could go for a walk, um, play with a friend, eat vegetables, um, exercise cards. So right here, I have these like exercise cards that they can do. So it's just, they just grab a stack and set a timer and they can play with these for whatever, right? And they do that with each other. So it's more of like a game. They have like someone who calls it out um, and then they do it. Anyway, they can do yard work. They can go play with our chickens. Um, I'm just trying to give you some suggestions that if you're kind of lost, um, they can play the ju just, just Dance video. They can play basketball or go to the tennis court, which is close or go for a walk. Okay, so that's for their body. Um, the blue ones for their mind, they can make a fort, they can memorize poems, 
They can play with Lego. They can do a read and report. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. They can do some logic puzzles. I have a logic puzzle book um, down in my bookshelf that they can grab. They can bake or cook something. Um, they can play with the dominoes, play a game with someone. Okay, so those are things for their mind. And then for their spirit, they can read their scriptures. They can write in their journal. Um, they can write list their blessings, play uplifting music. So like on the piano or on the radio or something. Do service, write a letter to someone, um, work on your goal. So we have a program that's the children and youth program. And as a part of that, they have goals that they work on just to kind of help them grow and mature in their mind and in their body and their spirit. So anyway, they can do some family history or indexing. So um, anyway, they when it's time for them to do something for their mind, body, and spirit, and a lot of times I have to tell them, or I have to ask them, have you done something for your mind, body, and spirit? Um, and sometimes they just know what they want to do, but if they come, if they're like kind of stuck, then they can pull something from this jar. So, um, so one of the mind options is to do a read and report. And so I, these are new for our homeschool this summer, and they are just these little brochures that I made. One's for the United States and then one is for an animal research. And then this is also an animal research, but because I have young kids, this is for them. I should have probably done something like this for the United States one, which I probably still will. I just haven't done it yet. So these are um, their brochures and they may not finish it in one sitting, but this is something that they can work on over the course of a week or whatever they want to do. And I wish, so do as I say, not as I do, um, to put some squares on here that require them to do at least one animal report and one state report or two or whatever number you want to have your kids do. I didn't require it, so my kids are less likely to just pick it up and do it. So we may have a season where I decide to have them do that. But anyway, so what I did is I just made a report brochure. So this is the animal one where they'll draw their animal in there. And then I just have um, various boxes and lines where they can write, like fill out this stuff. So I just put um, what they eat. So their diet or what's the prey and then how it protects itself, the defenses. And here are the predators, a life cycle, which I'm not going to lie. This isn't the best way to depict a life cycle of any animal, but it's what fit in the box, so that's what I did. And then some fast facts I put here, like how big does it get, what's the size of it, what's the covering, fur or scales or whatever, um, what colors does it come in, and then the classification is gonna be that one. The back is where it lives, its habitat, the climate, country or countries, and then what kind of home it builds, like does it live in a nest or a cave or a hive. And then this is just some personal learning stuff. I, I couldn't believe when I learned this, what I liked best about this animal was, and then did you know where they can put one of the fun facts that they liked about the animal? So that's this. Um, if you are interested in this as a product in my shop, please put a comment below. And if I, if, if it's wanted, then I will be happy to put it up there for a very nominal charge um, so that you can have it and download it and use as many as you want. So I just printed out, I actually did print it on heavy paper um, because I, I just always have heavier paper in my closet. Um, it's not cardstock, so I don't know what the poundage is, maybe 80 pounds, is that? I think cardstock's like 110 or 20 or something. Anyway, so it's a little bit heavier, but that way my kids can use markers and it won't like bleed through to the other side. So. So that's that. This one is for the United States, um, Road Trip USA. And then in this blank box, it really is anything that the kids wanna put in here. So they could put symbols of the state or they can put an actual like outline of the state or they can draw the state flag if they want to, like whatever they wanna put in this box, it's really open for them. And then as you open it up, so here's the inside of the brochure. Um, here's the gallery of state symbols. So we have the bird, the flower, the animal, and the tree. Um, this information, so I tried to go to my library and just pick up a bunch of like state type books, but the, my local library didn't have it. So what will probably happen is that we will be using the internet when we want to do the road trip brochure. And I will just sit with my kids and show them like how do we research safely on the internet to find the information that we're looking for. 
The animal brochures is I go to the library on a regular basis and I personally just go to the like nonfiction or the fiction section, whatever, nonfiction. And I pull out just a variety of animal books that I can find that my kids may not necessarily gravitate toward. So we just went yesterday and I think I got like a frog book and a chameleon was there and anyway, just everything. So, um, and then I have a, an extra bookshelf that I just barely added to my classroom, which is at the end on the outside of the camera here. And, um, I have some spaces that are specifically for their animal research and their library books. So, so that's what goes there anyway. Okay. Back to this. So this is the natural landmark. So this is going to be like mountains or rivers or state parks or anything that might be in the state. Uh, here's on the map. So they would find the state and color it. Here's the state flag right here. So then they can, you know, do a reproduction of that. Um, and then this is the do and see, or this is just like a fun little fast thing. So you put the capital, the state abbreviation, the state number. So when it was um, ratified into the union, the date it was established. So if it's the first state from 1776 or whatever, Okay, the nickname of the state, so are, is it the garden state or the beehive state or the gem state, right? And then the state motto. So I actually didn't know anything about the state motto when I was filling this out. Every state has a motto and I didn't know that. And so this, I thought this was a fun one that we could research and kind of add to our report. And then the last one is things to do and see. So this is just kind of like your tourist information or you know what you would want to go and do. So most often when my kids do California, we've already done California before, but Disneyland is like a huge thing that they're like, let's go to Disneyland again. So I try to kind of show them there's way more to California than just Disneyland, or there's way more to Florida than just Disney World. So there's a lot you can kind of try to direct your kids learning. And that's what this section is for is to help show your kids like there's more to the state than this one popular attraction that we're super familiar with. So anyway, that's what this is. And then this is a fun fact about the state. Did you know um, whatever you want to put there? So I've added these to our summer and I really am going to, I might just like throw it on the bottom there with like a marker or something and just say, okay, you have to do two states and two animals by the end of the summer as well. Just a quick, we'll like throw this in. This is all a part of the same file. So on my, in my shop, if I ever get around to putting it up there, um, you'll get the big, like the older version for the older kids. And then this is for the younger students. So my first grader and then my preschooler. So they can draw a picture of the animal. And then this is what can they do. So they write, list three things what they can do. What color is it? What do they eat? Where do they live? And what covering does it have? So it's just a lot more um, elementary so that you can have all of your kids sitting around and maybe you wanna do a whole you know, day or a week or something where you're studying one unique animal. So when my kids first found these, they were very excited and they grabbed it, but then each of them picked an animal they already knew. Like my oldest did a lion, my young, my middle child did like a kitty cat, and then my youngest did like a puppy dog. And I was like, that's missing the point. I want you to do something that's unique and different and learn about an animal maybe that you didn't know about before. So then my son was like, oh, okay, well, I want to do the orca whale. And I was like, exactly, let's do that. So, um, so anyway, that is our summer plans. And I'm super excited about it. If this is, if anything that I have talked about is something that you're like, I don't know how to make that. I understand that I can just like whip something together and other people might be like, I don't even know where to begin. I am more than happy to create something very generic so that you can then transfer it onto your computer and use it for yourself. So just leave me a comment and let me know because I just need to know what would be valuable for you so that I can create a generic general version of it and allow and then put it up in my shop over at teachers pay teachers and um and then you can have it as well again my shop is very small i know that there's a lot of people that like make a lot of content and they have a lot of variety and so um i just like to duplicate what i've done i don't and so if this is what i've already done and if it seems valuable to you or you want it to just let me know and i'll be happy to share it with you so Anyway, those, I'll just put my shop down in the description box below. Um, thank you so much for watching yet another video of mine, and I hope you all have a very happy summer.